All right, so I had a little bit of problems uploading the last video, so I'm going to make another one, and hopefully this goes a little better. So um, I wanted to kind of show you a rough solution that I came up with. Uh, you might want to make it a little fancier, kind of play with it and that sort of stuff, but it is at least a solution that, that works that you can rotate um, an object from multiple points. So, uh, okay, so I'm just going to freeze this uh, transformation. I'm going to drop down a couple locators, and I'm going to move this out. It's about 10 on the X, and then I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to move it out negative 10 on this X. So they're the same distance apart. And then I'm just going to parent both of those to the P cube. So the P cube, if I wrote it, you will see that we have uh, those locators just attached to them. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so if you're trying to make a staff or something like that, and you want your character to grab here and it rotate, or your character to grab there and it rotate, how do we make this like rotate from a couple different points? Well, that's kind of what I wanted to get into. So I have made, so if we come over here, um, come to the little script editor, make sure you're in your Python tab. Um, this script will do what we want. I made a couple buttons out of it. So for the first button, uh, you could come here and comment out this line, uh, select all this, go to file, say script to shelf, and then for the second button, comment out that one, highlight all that, and then file, say script to shelf, and that'll um, make the second button. That's what these two buttons do. Okay, so let me kind of explain the code just so you understand what's going on here. So this is Python. We're importing the Maya commands as commands. Um, these are two variables. Loc1 is a variable. Loc2 is a variable. Loc1. So it's a this variable is getting some data from this. Uh, so what this is doing is it's getting the transform of locator1. So whatever you have, like this could be a joint, it could be whatever you want this to be, you just need to make sure that this name matches that name. And then for locator2, this name matches that name. And so this is going to give and store us the world location for wherever um, that is and store it in the, these variables, okay? And then here, what this is going to do is this is going to change, okay, the P cube, okay, so if this was called staff or something, whatever else, right, instead of P cube one, if it was called staff, you'd name it staff um, here and here. Same thing with this and this, but since this is P cube, um, P cube one, we just want to make sure that those names are there. So whatever, again, your model is called, just name it to that, okay? So what this is going to do is it's going to use the location of the X position of loc one, the Y position of loc one, and the Z position of loc one, and it's going to move the pivot to that location. And then the same thing for this. So essentially that's why we wanted to run this uh, with with this, and you always, here's the trick, you always have to click this button to, because as we rotate this stuff, the world position of these um, locators has changed, right? So you'd always have to, to do that. So that's what I have here. I just have two buttons that I made, okay? And so if I click this button, you'll see that it gives me the location of this, and if I click pivot two, it gives me the location of that. So it just kind of goes back and forth. So this isn't working 100% yet, and let me show you why, because there's one last thing we need to do. So if I click uh, S to set a keyframe, and then I come to like 10, and I rotate it, okay, and I click S, and then let's say I come to frame 11, and then I click PQ2, okay, and I'll click S, and then out to PQ20. Like, it looks like it worked, but here's the problem the the pivot isn't keyed, right? So the pivot, where a second ago, this this rotation right here was pivot was animating off of the pivot being based here. The pivot change was never keyed. So what we needed to do to be able to also include the pivot in our keyframes, I'm just going to undo that, is we need to expose those uh, parameters and make those keyable. So I'm going to come to Windows, General Editors, and Channel and Control. And so with the P cube one selected, I'm going to go down and I'm looking for 
um, rotate pivot uh, X through Z and then the rotate pivot translate X through Z. I'm going to select all that and then I'm going to click this move button because I want to move it out of this non-keyable over into this keyable section. And so once I click that button, we'll also see that pop up here. So now I can click S, go to 10, rotate, click S. We'll go to like pivot two, click S, go to 20, do something like that, click S, back to pivot one, click S, 30, click S. And so now, like if I scrub this, now you'll see like, oh, we're rotating around that. And then when we get to here, now we're all of a sudden rotating around that. And now we're rotating around the other pivot again. So we kind of go through this back and forth, like rotating around different pivot um, pivot places. And that's allowing us to key that. So um, that's it in a nutshell. You can definitely make this fancier, uh, get a good model in here, do some fun stuff with it. Um, yeah, but hopefully this has been helpful.